Hello there everyone and welcome to the start of a new campaign in a thousand week wreck in which we're playing as the Yenisetsk government. But we gotta talk about the humble republic. <clears throat> During good old Joseph Stalin's reign of terror, many political prisoners were rounded up and sent to various gulags among the Union's infamous camps. The Norlog is one of them. When the Great Patriotic War was seemingly lost, authorities in the remote regions of Siberia started a panic and issue that was only worse than when big old Joey Stalin vanished without a trace. <clears throat> Mikhail Kalinin The government focused on the issues of European Russia more and more prisoners arrived in Norilog. As camps in Western Russia began to grow vulnerable to the impending German advance, as the prison population increased, support and funding from the department stagnated. As the situation continued to deteriorate, Levent Beria finally took control of the Union. This was the final straw for the prisoners of Norilog, as Beria announced that the halt of all funding for the Norilog alongside a general amnesty, an amnesty that granted them the freedom but not the means to travel home at the same time. Chaos unfolded in Norilog's nearby regions. The Soviet pretender governments rose up against Beria, combining this with a great number of stranded prisoners and a handful of guards. The people of Norilog launched a, a revolution, first overthrowing the camp authorities and soon overtook the entire city of Norilsk. When the officials of the region telegraphed both Soviet governments, asking for reinforcements, both sides were preoccupied and were building up for a conflict to become a legitimate government. Two days later, after the successful revolution, the Commissar of Norilsk managed to convince Parmenides and Alexander Sirokin's military formation to pacify the situation, but when the reinforcements finally arrived, Alexander Sirokin and his officers were sickened by the endless bickering in the Soviet Union and decided to go over, joining the revolution and forming a new government. Since then, the Norilsk government functioned independently without much interference. An independent socialist republic was declared, and then abandoned rural communities around Yenisek went sent their own representatives, forming a loose assault defense coalition under the flag of a neutral, independent republic. The big shots of Norilog became the politicians of this young republic. First, they drafted a constitution. Then, they created a parliament, formed dozens of political parties, and appointed themselves as deputies, however. Despite all these democratic gestures, the situation remained strange blend of representative democracy, more akin to mob rule, with power residing in the ones with the most vocal supporters moving forward. And we have no focuses. And tutorial, we're ready to play. We're led by Pavel Franklin. A Frankel. But Norilsk Parliamentary has completed. Formerly meeting in the Ravan section of a factory, the Norilsk Parliament did not have a proper meeting place until now. Just a year ago, the government decided on a permanent location which the Parliament would meet near the center of Norilsk. After months of work, the construction is finally completed. A former Soviet administration building will be entirely reshaped into the Norilsk Parliament House, a building that would be able to host up to 200 deputies. While the Parliament House was barely big enough to be fitted with the Parliament Hall, the deputies would still need to settle their respective offices in different corners of the city. Following the Parliament's completion, Many political parties are now pressuring the government, demanding an election, no longer seeing the purpose of the appointed parliament. That's more like it. We have Central Russian Famine. We have the autonomous countryside, which is really bad. We have the lack of supplies, which is not terrible. Brotherhood in desperate times, which is good, as well as a young democracy. Interesting. I completed the Norilsk Parliament. Parliament of Norilsk is the legislative organ of the city and nearby regions ever since its foundation. It's in little more than fight over trivial issues rather than compromise on the alarming problems the country has. If we're not to fix this inefficient apparatus, our state could easily suffer from internal meltdown. The biggest and current ruling party of Yeniseksk, the Liberal Workers' Socialist Party, held regular party assemblies, recruiting additional party members and performing multiple political stunts to increase their popularity. Ideologically, the LRSP pledges to uphold democratic values and create a liberal approach to socialism, promising things such as protection of personal freedom of strong government and workers' rights. The party's political views have not changed since its formation by pa Pavel Frank Frankl, a man that is determined to reform Yenisek into a proper state under the red banner of the LRSP and his fifth party assembly. Frankl hinted towards an upcoming election, promising the party that with all the work they have done for the people, the right to rule will finally be proven after a decisive election, and then we will continue our great work. And gave some more daily XP, which is very nice. We, have, uh, we don't get anything else, which kind of sucks. We get a little more than 1.42, a little bit more than 1.4 political power every single day. We've got Boris Sh Shemev. Not bad. And Ivan Novorobyov. Novorobyov. Oh, that's pretty good. More speed, I like that. More organization and less pocket consumption. Election planning. Following the hints of the 5th LRSP Assembly, Pavel Frankl and his government has announced a plan for an upcoming election, the Republic's, Republic's very first proper general election. In this general election, voters will determine the political makeup of the deputies, and most importantly, which party will be able to lead the government with a mandate given by the people. However, unique to Yenisek, or Yeniseksk, where they function largely being a rubber stamp for the leading party heading the executive. In addition, in the upcoming days, the electoral registry will be open for political parties, allowing parties that have met the requirements to join the election. Sadly, due to logistical reasons, the election will only take place in Norilsk with rural representatives voting on behalf of their separate communities. Finally, a taste of electoralism. 
Election campaign so far has been a little more than a huge street fight between party supporters. It's clearly no sort of debate on ideological practical issues or any issues whatsoever. These street brawls have left hundreds wounded and even a few casualties, but not to mention the monetary loss from also their shops. First election, general election. The Iron Republic's first election is about to start ready. We can already see people carrying sticks, stones, and even guns in the most grotesque cases to the voting polls. We can only hope the casualties aren't too high. Nice. Very nice. Oh, dude, General Ox We have three militia divisions. Uh, we're going to need someone with a lot of defense. Simyov could have shine. Also, it looks like these guys are really good because they're veterans and they're like Polk and just like there, but uh, they're, they're too combo with. Oh, good God, they're too combo with. But located next to the newly constructed Norilsk Parliament House, the electoral registry is now officially open. In the two months, political parties have over 500 registered members and can afford to pay an entrance fee to be registered under an electoral ticket. Coalitions are only allowed to, on a joint ticket, and parties that have registered a ticket may not submit additional tickets. Alongside these basic requirements, there are now many more absurd rules that political parties have to follow. These rules are laid by the registry to eliminate as many minor and significant parties from joining the election as possible. In light of what the registry announced, the Norilsk PDR has filed multiple complaints, calling the upcoming election a total sham. One ticket at a time, please. Sirotkin, yes. We need a lot of defense, too. A lot, a lot, a lot of defense. A dead atomic bomb, yay, yay, yay. But we'll see all, what else we can do. Also, I don't let you know that if I have to, I will use Khan's commands for this campaign, because we're just looking like we're going to suck really hard for a lot of this campaign. But, delegates of the LSPR, or LRSP, have to register their party for the upcoming election. Being the largest party, the LRSP was able to finish the process in a relatively quick fashion. Paying the fee up front and meeting little to no challenge. Immediately after the ticket was confirmed, Pavel Frankel performed a brief speech, encouraging the people to vote for the LRSP in the Republic's first ever general election, as expected. Makes sense. We have a gearing economy, which is not terrible. Not great. We have a facade democracy. Very nice. We've got a civilian economy, export focus, volunteer only. we got Mikhail Ismailov, a flamboyant tough guy, which is okay. Alexander Zelenskaya, which is okay. Ivan Vorobyov, as we said earlier. And then we've got Zverin. Cool. KSB Democrate joint ticket. Arguing, arguably the party of the most political experience. The KSB Communist Socialist Party claims to be the success of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union in Orals. Formed in the Neural Log by imprisoned Soviet officials, the Communist Socialist Party despises multiple different Soviet governments. Led by the charismatic leader Leon Brezhnev, a former Soviet commissar, the Communist Socialist Party continued to grow in size and drifted apart from typical communist views. But at the end of 51, the the Communist Socialist Party's ideology has reached its final form, dedication towards accomplishing Marxism by the use of nationalism and traditionalism, keeping many aspects of the Soviet system while introducing radical rightist ideas. Therefore, once the up upcoming general election was announced, the KSP seek to register, wanting to increase their chances the Communist Socialist Party partner with the infamous Democratic sector. A small but relevant political party that openly advocates for Italian-style fascism. Together, the two parties have successfully launched a joint ticket, being the first opposition group to only openly stand against the ruling LRSP. These people are little fascists. Something that we love in this campaign. Meet with the unions. Oh crap. 60% chance of successful meetings, 40% chance of failed meetings. You get more weekly stability though, which is pretty nice. Welfare reforms use a lot of political power. Holy crap. Um, I might, oh, actually then again, these guys would be okay. Maybe, maybe not, we'll see. Here then, cool. Uh, Alternativa announces election bib. Formed by the more intellectually stimulated prisoners of the Norlog. The alternative communist parties are self-proclaimed spiritual successor of the Soviet Union's left opposition. Led by the formerly imprisoned Ivan Vratchev, the alternative communist party brands itself as a true alternative solution to all the NSX problems. Furthermore, the party follows Trotskyism as its honest guiding principle, seeing Trotskyism as a solution for not only the province, but the whole of Russia in general. Despite urges from the LRSP to not run in the upcoming general election, the alternative communist party, backed by the intellectuals, have registered for the election, seeking to remove the contradictory LRSP from the positions of power. These Trotskyites. Ugh. Liberal Workers Socialist Party. Don't ask me how this all works. It just does. Another militia division. Yes, please. We're out of manpower now. Yay. All right. AP Betrayal, commonly known as the Vanguard Party. Its formation was tied with the arrival and then defection of the Soviet reinforcements originally. The Vanguard Party worked closely with the LRSP and remained a party of primarily military interests bearing an ideology similar to that of the Bolsheviks, but leader of the Vanguard's party, Alexander Serotkin, has registered the party for the upcoming general election, but Cyril can promise that the party will cooperate with the other political parties regardless of election results. Leaders of the LRSP have condemned this political development, saying that if it would only serve to split the vote with the, with the, within the liberal base. 
Those dudes. Oh, you dudes. You dirty, dirty dudes. Also, we are barely making any guns, too. We got four. Jesus. We are in a crappy position, not gonna lie. So we got mechanical computing. Get as much research speed as possible. Holy smoky fathers. So when do we have elections? I'm ready to vote and not die to the Russians. Mob clash of tension between the different political parties are intense. In a political stunt, the LRSP organized a small booth in front of the party HQ, handing out free small loaves of bread. This event was extremely popular with the locals, with hundreds lining up to receive their shares. However, the KSP supporters, equipped with shelves and megaphones, disturbed the event by repeatedly shouting the phrase LRSP poison the bread. Only traders can stomach it. After garnering little to no attention, the KSP escalated their actions by talking directly with the people waiting in the queue, resulting in a violent confrontation between the LRSP supporters and the KSP supporters. The incident went on for approximately 40 minutes before military police restored order. As a result, two people died and a dozen more were injured. Pavel Frankel and Leonid Brezhnev both condemned the violence but blamed one another for being the, pro for being the provocateurs. Uh, as you can tell from the thumbnail, you know who we're going with, but I think we're going with the KSP. This is chaos. Oh, crap. It's time for a Yenisex first ever general election with a total of four political parties competing for the national leadership. No one can predict which party will come out on top when the word general election comes to mind. One might imagine a British or American style electoral campaign. Things, however, operate differently in the brutal city of Norilsk. Divided the city into different electoral units, the parties have developed the perfect solution while would ensure support, violence, and coercion. The outcome of this election solely depends on the amount of control that each party can assert. The more districts that a political party controls, more likely for it to achieve success than a general election. However, if a political party would fail to control these two districts in the event of a party leading, it may lead to severe consequences. Interesting. What the heck? Uh, we'll go try it. It's hard to see what. Who has what section? I'm not really sure which one's the right one to choose, so. Five days left? Um Okay, so KSP resources in control. Downtown. Wow, this is kind of crazy. Go central next, because we don't have a lot of manpower. Oh, okay. Loot the northern section. Huh. Control's 25%. We're pretty bad here, but we might be able to do okay. I can loot as well? Okay. Yeah, if I don't, we don't do well here. Um, well, I'll do the best we can, of course, but... Germany wins the EFC, alright. Go and loot as well. Occupy it, maybe? I'm not sure how long we can do this for it still, so... Let's see. North, northwest. Our control is 35%. Goes down by 100. Yeah. Um, I guess we just keep doing this part, I suppose. Now we control uh, 40% here, which is pretty good, I think. 35 is over there. 45% still here. 
Come back up here and do that one. Computer machine. Game register speed. I keep working on factories and stuff like that. Ooh, actually. Uh, do I want to use anything here? Construction speed is pretty good. 50% is pretty awesome, actually. Anything else? Soft attack. If it's we might need that one. We'll see. I do want to get to this stuff quickly, though. Oh, look. We're out of map bar. How unfortunate. 45%. And the campaign, 150 days, huh? Make sure that these two sections we have are very under, our, very much under our control. We can't loot it. Oh, we have the. We have to loot that. But these two. We would like more loot, please. We need more map art as well, but we'll see. We got three, huh? Not bad so far. Loot the downtown. Pan, alright. Barely have the northern section. Oh, we have no resources, okay. Occupy. If these were like more brightly colored and we could actually see the differences between each one. I think that'd be better, just because it's hard to see exactly which sections we have under our control. Hopefully we're doing okay. Well, I control a lot of areas already. Free France joins the Accords, okay? Oh. Loot their butts. We still have six. They have a lot more manpower. Do we need more manpower? I'm not really sure. At the very least, they can have one region while we could just loot, like loot the other ones. And there goes Greece. Oh, Germans are getting involved, huh? Nice. We got four manpower. Look at that. Four whole manpower. We do a lot of control here, which is pretty nice. 45%, 35% which is barely ahead. Um, 35% barely ahead. Can we loot these guys? We really had to, we could occupy it. Einstein killed Israel. Once with a coup. Ooh, LRSP. The thing always fails. Also, I think I left this on a historical. I don't think there there is a historical occupation. Why not? Improve computer machines. Good. Absolutely, because you can. Coup and perm. Um. Sislav in the USSR. Another leader. Oh wow. So there goes Beria. I have played as Beria though. And someone wanted me to play as Brezhnev, so that's basically the way we're going to go, so. Don't know if I need to keep my political power or not, but. And also, we can't really build anything else here, too, which does. Doesn't really kind of suck. I think we're going to do this. Good luck. We're also probably going to need it. Six is not bad. All right, we got a couple more campaigns, and uh, yeah, we're to fail to control these two districts in the event of a, uh, event of the party leading may lead to severe consequences. What happens if we fail then? Taft has been elected, and comes victory. The national books have emerged victorious. Would you look at that? 
A communist victory at last with all of our rivals out of the way, Chairman Brezhnev and his trusted allies have emerged victorious, built on the principles of extreme nationalism and communist ideals. Our unique synthesis is precisely what Noros needs, emergency powers. The principles of liberal democracy have gotten Noros and the Russian people very little except misery on a grand scale. The recent elections were also the most turbulent our republic has ever seen. In the name of all that is right in the world, this failed experiment must end. We get dictatorship, lose political power, get what we recruit by population factor, and we lose some stuff, and lose a lot of stability, and we remove a young democracy. Yeah, who likes democracy? Hey, Brezhnev! Hope I'm saying his name right. Very cool. Look at that guy. Open the food storage. The elites of the old regime encouraged themselves on the food which the people needed more, no doubt a hallmark of its capitalist leanings. For a great famine finally coming to an end, the hoarded food should be distributed to the people immediately. Oh, we're actually losing guys every day? That sucks. Not bad. Iron fist, huh? We open the camps. You lose political power. The guard and the Soviets, the new army. Deport the undesirable. It's a five year plan. Anti landlord campaign. Wow. Huh. The new Soviet man. Form the NKDG. Revisionist nationalism. Oh, wow. Oh, we'll remove that, though. Quarter mechanics, not bad. The new army. Um, uh, got in the Soviet. Eh, reopen the camps. I don't want to lose any more political power yet. We're actually losing political power. Well, maybe we'll believe that the principles of Marxism are incompatible with the religious zeal. Jim and Brezhnev thinks otherwise. Was it not our Lord Jesus who drove the merchants from the temple for the greed? Yes, the moral values of Christianity not only work in our idealized Soviet system, but it in fact fits like a glove. Opening the food storage. The previous LRSB government withheld valuable uh, bread storages from the general public in the name of security and saving it for a future crisis. We will open the food storage and our administration will focus or become incredibly popular. Saving for the future is not our obligation. Satisfy the immediate needs of the workers and later on if they encounter hardships, they will understand that it is their personal failure and the suffering for the greater good. Bread for all useful citizens. Nice, go to the famine and get recovering from the famine, which is even better. And more national daddyism. The new army. Our army is a laughable excuse of a few peasants with sharpened sticks, while some of them don't even have sticks. Our survival depends on these militias, but in their current state they wouldn't stand a chance. It is time we look to the reform of our defense forces. The uh, revolutionary self-defense forces. Get more organization, organization which would be good. From us, uh, uh, get some planes, officer school, it's not... Okay. Oh, we get a research slot. Oh, that's actually really nice. Open Soviet armories, which would be nice. Not that much though. Hunter battalions is okay. Great empty doctrine. Hmm. Or two crewman teams would begin to reactivate the German trophies. Five Messerschmitt ME 262s. Oh, that's not bad too. This is going to be a difficult campaign. We'll see. We'll try to do it peacefully. We'll try to do it like, you know, without cons commands, but there will be no guarantees here. The new army. Mm. Indonesian victory. Clerical commissars. National revolution. Prayers of Marx, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy paradise come, thy will be done, and on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and we'll give our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us, and leave us not temptation, but live from evil. Jesus was the first socialist after all. Revolutionary self defense forces? To defend the revolution is a calling greater than any other, but revolutionaries you won't win wars. Our armed forces are patriotic in comparison to those that wish to absorb us. We should seek to modernizing the self-defense forces immediately. Fragile economy. Yeah, we have a pretty bad economy. Wayland, Wagen assassinated. A brave frontier. Concentrate industry in Norilsk. Southern farmlands. Kind of like that. It looks really good. Factory town. Ooh, we have some free oil, though. That's not bad. Let's do this one next. And after this one, we'll probably go... I want to get the extra research slot as fast as possible. And I do know we need a lot of this stuff, too, but... Mm, I want that research slot. Formalize the military hierarchy. Our militias are nothing that, more than a bunch of disorganized rabble that only loosely answer the central government when they find it convenient. This must change, and a centralized army hierarchy will make these undisciplined masses fall into line. The Norilsk Officer School. All of the Red Army's finest officers all went to the communists and far eastern warlords, leaving us with very little in the ways of training corps. It's time we trained uh, the new generation of Norilsk officers for our new army. 
pretty much, and then it must be in clerical commissars. A soldier must always know who and what they are fighting for. Aside from the state in their home, there is no greater the calling than serving in the army of God. We should give her battalions detachments of commissars specialized in the Lord's service to remind them of their holy duty. And the war reaches the fjords. Oh boy. Oh boy. Um, mass production. Mass production. You get more base, though. I like more base. Batch production. Uh, let's go with that one. Cool. Just so we get that research slide as fast as possible. Clerical stuff. Deport the peoples. I wish these trees would go away once you, like, actually go down the route you want. But we'll probably play as Genesec a couple couple times. See what they're all different like. Um, let's see. We're close. We're close. Also, I've gone ahead, and we already zipped some army XP. I decided between Strategic Theorem or Asymmetric Warfare. I thought Asymmetric won't be really good, because we're really going to have to be very, very defensive. But I want Strategic Theorem, because you get the max attrition at first. And uh, for this one, as much as I really do like it, and you get a lot of population and whatnot, it takes so long to get down to plus 15, which is very strong. But with plus 10 over here, and you go to a Defensive Theory, you get plus 5 again, so you get plus 15 anyways. So I didn't really see a point in just waiting that long, so yeah. We don't went down. We don't went down the right. Wait, why am I going this? Am I doing this now? Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's not do that one now. Why? Do, why do I cl suck that one? That one. Four hundred days. What am I thinking? I'm not thinking. My bad. There you go. That's a lot better. What about uh, clerical commissars? Headquarters of the National Revolution. Norrell, squad desolate wasteland is nonetheless our homeland above all. That should also be something more. The vanguard for Jim and Brezhnev's National Revolution. Once we begin venturing out beyond the wastes, the tides of history shall sweep over the warlords and revive the Russian spirit once again. A democratic revolution in Slovakia. Another revolution. Vacuum tube computing. Very nice. Very, very nice. 60s. Let's go over here. Encryption. Very, very good. And we're still building up some roads because we can't build up any factories. I don't like our starting position. Soviet Republic of Novosibirsk and Krasnoyarsk. Soviet government. Oh boy. Oh boy. That does not look very good. Alright, clerical commissars. Yes, yes. Under the directive of the Communist Party, a new unit of commissars been, has been trained. These commissars are faithful, orthodox men, not being able to inspire their fellow soldiers with the power, word of God, however. What sets them apart from the average preacher is their ability to incorporate orthodox scripture from the words of Marx and Lenin. When they try to inspire the people, they hold their small suppadanum crust and a peasant sickle high in the air. With the word of God and teachings of communism, they will be surely unstoppable. Just a little morale booster, of course. A little morale booster. And after this one... Uh, great empty. I mean, that's alright. The cost reduction for land auction is pretty decent, too. I like that a lot, too, but... We're up in the camps. Uh, I'm a big believer in camps. And Germany's falling into civil war, too. Well, look at see the Norlogs loom heavy over the Republic. A vestige to a time when many of our citizens were locked, once locked up as enemies as, of the state. While many might see us as a backstabbing our, of our principles, the Norlog must open again if we ever hope to make our nation stable once again. The worst criminals will have to spend their time in the gulags, of course. Once again. And we're a renewed gulag system. We lose a lot of political power, which sucks every single day. But we get a whole two building slots. Go figure. It's all worth the building slots, right? Totally. Totally, totally, totally. And there we go. The National Revolution. Oh, the National Bolshevik Revolution is the only path for Russia to go down, of course. <clears throat> Jim and Brezhnev understands this. The Communist Party understands this. Um, and it's only a matter of time until all Russia understands this undeniable truth. Russia will be revived. Norilsk National Revolutionary Government. Very cool. Oh, deport the undesirables. Because there are quite a few undesirables that we don't like here and we should probably get rid of. Anyways, just for fun. The natives of the Arctic have long resented this state for its alleged neglect and abuse of their lands. But who said this was their land to begin with? What do they contribute? Do they even pay their taxes? These men are incompatible with the state of Norilsk. And should be forced to leave our Russian nation. We get the deportation of Arctic peoples. Very, very nice. Deportation of Arctic peoples. The natives of Arctic Siberia simply do not deserve the land. It is the government's responsibility to prepare these lands for our fellow Slavs. 
Our troops have ordered these people to march south, and during this journey it's their responsibility to feed themselves and keep themselves warm. Official estimates, estimation expects little to no survivors. These help humans don't belong here. Ah, yes. And now we're losing even more political power. But look at that. 70% na national daddy of support. Sign us up. Look at the landlords. Is there any class more parasitic and oppressive than that of landlords? The very notion of renters profiting off of their tenants is a concept more vile than any imaginable. These men have absolutely no place in our nation and shall be dealt with appropriately. Our five-year plan. The five-year plan is one of the greatest methods of at our disposal that we've had for centralized industrialization. As we lack much in the ways of industry, both light and heavy, we should begin a new five-year plan to bring us up to speed with our neighbors. Absolutely. And the new Soviet man and fanat fanatical dictatorship, which we have dictatorship, minus 10% political power anyway, so let's get a little more fanatical, shall we? New Soviet man. Um, anything really different? Non core manpower just goes down. Monthly population, Kubo population factor. Uh, it seems pretty, pretty, pretty standard. Not gonna lie, pretty standard. Not, not too different here, so. Quite a few guns, which is nice. Uh, new Soviet man. Remove autonomous countryside, which we lose. Okay, that's not bad. We do get the plus 20, plus 30% more political power back and recruitable population factor, way more construction speed. So actually getting that would be very, very good. Okay. It's high time we reshape the Soviet people into something more fitting of our culture and history. Free of the moral degradation caused by liberal capitalism and internationalist counter-revolutionaries. The new Soviet people shall be one that are proud of the heritage and race, working proudly towards the promotion of national Bolshevism. Uh, way, way more encryption decryption. Wow. Brotherhood in desperate times. Uh, I mean, revisionist nationalism? I mean, what happens if we get attacked? We probably want to keep that for now, right? Form the NKG. NKDG. Enemies of the state, regardless of how hard we may try, will always be among us. Ooh, that's a bit, uh, sus. To combat the problems of counter-revolutionary records and saboteurs, the people's commissariat for state affairs shall be established to work as our eyes and ears across the state. Oh, Canaris. How did Canaris get here? I mean, there was a coup that happened in Germany. Did you actually win? Hans Speidel? Wait, what? How does Hans Speidel win? What? Oh, because it's Monster on that one, right? Yeah. I've never seen this route before. Rommel's Intervention. Oster coup. Hans Speidel? Fascist triumph sounds awesome. We love national socialism and fascism here. Nice. Well, we do have 12 divisions. That doesn't mean they're any good, though. Well, we don't really need the quarter mechanic either, so. Well, I guess we could use another milli. Our fragile economy, the Norals kind has been left to neglect for years by the Soviet Union in the turbulent years of our early republic. We've had to restart out the Norals economy and begin anew for us to uh, become a real nation. Construct civilian workshops? Unemployment for interlight and industry sector is a serious problem, and we could benefit greatly from expanding our civilian industry sector economically. All right, everyone. So, as you can see on screen, we're at war with a little bit of another nation, most notably the Krasnoyarsk Soviet government, which is uh, going okay for us. Uh, maybe not so much. Truth be told, I'd use cons commands to give us some guns, basically 10,000 guns, and about 50 to 67,000 manpower. Even then, I don't know if we can actually still win. I made, like, and I didn't do this with Khan's commands, but I made 18 combat with infantry divisions, I guess just really more like militia divisions. I hate militia with a burning passion, but we don't really have enough industry for anything. So, yeah, this is not going great, but we're going to do some more focuses. Open the Soviet Armory. The Soviet Armory, or the Soviet Union, left behind many armories and weapon caches when central authority collapsed instead of using a refurbished and outdated rifles from yesteryear. Perhaps we can use these more modern ones instead? 100 battalions. 100 battalions as they have become known are rare uh, as elite troops specialized in mountain warfare. It's become especially useful when dispatching border raids, which expand their strength substantially. Great empty doctrine. Norsk is a vast tundra with little in way of deterring an army from a side of extreme cold. We should attempt to make the best of our terrain advantages and adapt our central command or central military strategy around it. And recruitment teams. Our armies have few men in between them and even fewer guns to match. I hope to stand any chance against the larger nations that surround us, we must begin a comprehensive recruitment campaign. Eh, that'd be okay. Actually, do we need steel? Eh, we're kind of okay on steel for now. Form the Flying Corps. No modern armed forces are complete without a wing of experienced airmen, so too shall Norals take to the skies. The Norals Flying Corps shall dominate the skies of Russia. 
retrofit Soviet air equipment. The Soviets left many aircraft parts behind when Central Authority collapsed, and with a new air corps, we could reuse this to our advantage. Laying the airstrips. No air force can be useful without modern airstrips with which to take off and land on. Norwalsk, unfortunately, has none. We should build some. Reactivate the German trophies. The Soviet Red Air Force, in its feudal war with the Third Reich, captured many Luftwaffe aircraft and transported them out east as trophies. As these trophies now lay in our possession, it's time we got them working again, but this time it's on our times in a standard army. If we can do this one. Our nation's armed forces are no longer a laughing stock to our people and our rivals, but for a middle fighting force that one day might even rival the Germans. With a standardized armed force and a united people by our side, we're unbreakable, but unfortunately, we'll have to end the episode here. I'm just going to spend a lot of time just doing this off screen just because this is, getting, this is going to be really a pain in the butt, to be honest with you. But, if you enjoyed the video, leave a fat like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below tomorrow, and I'll see you tomorrow when we totally want to use Khan's commands to make sure that we don't completely die to the Krasnoyarsk Zukov Soviet government. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great rest of your day.